It's the third straight 31-win season, first time that's been accomplished in program history. They advance to take on number nine, Texas A&M Sunday. Coach Sampson joined by a couple of seniors in Jamal Shedd, who had 11, point, 11 points, nine assists tonight, and L.J. Cryer with a game-high 17. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach and then take questions for the student-athletes. Coach? Yeah, I, I thought the uh, most important thing for us um, uh, after the uh, Big 12 tournament was rest. We just needed to rest. You know, because of all the injuries we've had, we just kind of we're just not made for three games in three days. That was tough for that was tough for our group. But I was proud of them. You know, uh, winning two games um, in that tournament is not easy. Um, but we got to practice. The problem with playing, condensing your schedule where you're playing game, 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 that means that you're probably having slippage in some area. So it, it felt great. Um, uh, for me, that I was able to just work on us. Uh, Monday, normally I would give them Tuesday off, but I didn't want, to, I'm sorry, Monday off, but I didn't. We came in Monday, worked on our defense, worked on our defense on Tuesday, um, and we started working on Longwood on uh, Wednesday. So we just, we needed to, we just needed to tighten some things up. You know, um, I could see it slipping against um, the Texas Tech game. I, I could see it slipping, and then, uh, then we just got steamrolled uh, on that on that Saturday. But it felt great to go back and <clears throat> work on our fundamentals, get get back to doing the things that's made us a a good defensive team. Uh, then get some guys healthy. You know, Jaywan Roberts wasn't really able to play in the Iowa State game. Ramon Walker was out. He wasn't able to play. Uh, so having those bodies back tonight, I thought was good. Um, and I thought our kids were sharp uh, the first half. Uh, our defense was, was really good. I watched, we watched f f uh, film on uh, Longwood, um, you know, winning their tournament, especially beating High Point at High Point's not easy. Um, so we had a lot of respect for them. and. And we played accordingly. But, uh, you know, since the NCAA tournament, you don't take anything for granted. Um, our kids came in with the right attitude. Our best players approached it the right way, and our team followed. We'll start with questions for student athletes, uh, beginning to our right. Jason Bristol from KHOU in Houston. Uh, for both Jamal and LJ. Uh, this was a five-point game at the, in the first half, and then you guys ripped off, a, I think, a 20-4 to four run. From your perspectives, um, what fueled, fueled that run? Um, our defense, um, we started getting stops, and we were able to get run outs and easier baskets. And uh, we forced a lot of turnovers. Um, we got a lot of good shots in that run. And uh, we, played, we played to our culture during that whole stretch. So I, I think mostly our defense uh, fueled it. LJ? Uh, I mean, I would say the same thing. Uh, we just let our defense lead to offense instead of just worrying about um, offense. We, we locked down and forced turnovers, and that led out to easy, easier buckets. We'll go straight in front of you guys. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch for both of you. When you are a heavy favorite and, and the higher seed and all of that, how important was getting off to a good start in this one to you know, not kind of give them any life there? Uh, we don't really look at favorites or you know, the seeding, they're, they're a good team and they're here for a reason. Um, so we looked at it like another game where we had to ra have the right approach or, you know, we could have lost. So uh, I felt like we were prepared the right way. Our coaching staff got us uh, prepared and um, we went into the game with the right mindset. And I felt like um, we try to get off to a good start no matter um, what game it is. Uh, I feel like that's very important and coach preaches that. And so um, that's what we went out and did. Any others for the student athletes? Go ahead and we'll uh, stay where we were. Uh, Mike again from Richmond. Uh, for both you guys, Coach said he, he could feel or see some of the things slipping a little defensively. Did you guys sense that too? And how good did you feel about where you were uh, defensively coming into tonight? I mean, we definitely can sense it. Uh, we have a smart group of, of players and uh, we hold each other accountable. and. Um, we don't really make excuses. Uh, we, we definitely could see it, and 
coming into the game, we were confident because uh, we've, we've worked all week. So, yeah. The exact thing he said, um, we hold each other accountable. And uh, we got some rest this week. So um, we got rest, and we didn't make any excuses, and we came into this game with the right mindset. Stay on the aisle there. Uh, Justin Williams from The Athletic. For both you guys, I know he's sitting right there, but even up big in the second half, he's always coaching. Does he ever let up or take it easy on you guys? Hmm. Never. Um, he coaches 40 minutes of a 40-minute game, and um, I think that's what makes us good. Um, he coaches everybody off the bench the same way from uh, Ryan to me, and uh, he holds everybody to the same standard day in, day out, practice or game. Yeah, I mean, as long as time is on the clock, we out there to compete, uh, so we can't let up. And uh, yeah, he, he just holds us to that standard, holds us accountable. Any others? Guys, we'll let you go back to the locker room. Congratulations. We'll see you here Sunday. Thank you. We'll now uh, take questions for Coach Sampson. If you raise your hand, yeah. we will uh, get you a microphone also. Uh, we will be able to work in questions from the Zoom as well. But, um, Mike, we'll start with you on the aisle. Uh, hey, Coach Mike Barber, Richmond Times-Dispatch. Um, you heard me ask the guys about getting off to a big start. You've been in a lot of these tournaments, and you know what happens if you kind of let people hang around. Uh, how important was getting off to a good start, and, and was that something that you emphasized? Yeah, I, I don't think <clears> – you know, we've been – uh, I don't know how many times I've had teams that were a one seed or a two seed or a three seed, but, um, um, you know, if you have a good culture and, um, you know, you have high standards, you never have to worry about the question you ask me. That's as, as a question that every one seed will answer into eternity. But if you've got a, a culture and a uh, discipline in your program, um, you don't have to worry about that. I, I don't think I ever, and I mean this sincerely, I never mentioned the seeding. I just talked about how we had to play. You know, last, last Saturday, um, and a lot of it's because I don't have subs. That, that Saturday had a lot to do with that. You know, J1 Roberts didn't play the second half. He's probably our most important guy. He's not our most valuable guy. Jamal, our best player is Jamal. Uh, most important, most valuable is probably Jamal and LJ, but our most important guy is J1. We can't win without him. And, uh, you know, he only played seven minutes Saturday. Um, so being able to rest him uh, Sunday and Monday, I don't think I let him practice Monday, I can't remember. But um, I thought our, our team responded well, as they always do. You know, we had a, a game similar to the one on Saturday at Kansas. Now, Kansas, we kept fighting. I think we lost by 13, but it was never that close, which I didn't care about. All I cared about was getting them home and getting them right. And after the Kansas game, we won 11 consecutive games in the Big 12, which, trust me, is not easy to do. So after the Iowa State game, we didn't overreact like a lot of other people did. What we did was get back get back to our gym, close the doors where nobody can come in, and uh, we focused on what we had to do to get better, and, we're, and we know how to do that. On the back row. Coach, you kind of hinted yesterday that Ramon was getting close. Did you expect him to be able to go tonight, and then what kind of lift does that give you from I, a yeah, perspective? Yeah, I, th I thought he could play the first half, Justin. I wasn't quite sure if he could come out the second half because he, uh, when he hurt his knee, uh, I don't remember the date of the Baylor game, but the it was uh, we played Baylor on a Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning. He hurt his knee that Thursday, and we were told by the doctors and our trainer that he was going to have to have surgery, and that he would be done for the year. Um, so you can imagine how elated he was when he found out it was stretched but not torn, and uh, that 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 it could heal uh, in time. So I think that was about a month. So it's been about a month since he even played in the game. But you know, just having his body tonight, that's, that's what you, when you play three games in three days, you need more bodies. Um, and we just didn't have the bodies um, on Saturday. But uh, having him back and his, you know, um, Ramon's never gonna lead us in scoring or any of that stuff, but he, he is a tough kid. And he's a um, really good offensive rebounder. And our players 
like playing with him. Uh, they respect him a lot. So he gave us a lift tonight. And then the, the lot kid who didn't play at all until uh, Tugler uh, went down with his season ending surgery. He's just getting more and more comfortable. You know, he's a long way away from where JoJo was. I mean, JoJo was, there's not a lot of difference in JoJo and Javier. They're both about the same, which is why we were really good there for a long time. We had two starting fives, but um, um, just happy for Sid. I, I don't even know what his numbers are. Uh, I know he missed two free throws. Um, I don't think that was a shock to anybody that's ever seen him shoot a free throw. Um, I don't think these numbers are right. But, um, yeah, I mean, he hit the rim twice. We'll go from there. We're going to go to the Zoom. Uh, Dan, go ahead. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Coach, just what's been the most rewarding part of the run with the team this season, the adversity that you've been through, things you can't control, just the pride that you have in this specific group of guys and what they brought to the table as you step forward to the round of 32? Um, well, last, last year's team I thought was probably more talented uh, than this group. Uh, last year's team, we had the number eight pick in the draft in Walker and the number 25 pick in the draft in Sasser. And then uh, Tremont Mark is a very talented young man. And then we had a kid that passed away that um, his numbers on our jerseys, our, our kids and our coaches think about every day. But I think this team is more connected. Um, um, I think that June, July, and August was important for this group. Uh, we went to Australia and played. Uh, we were together. We practiced 10 times, and then we were together for 10, 11 days, played four games over there. So, some, some years you go just to go, but it was really, really important for this group, especially for LJ Cryer and Damian Dunn and JoJo Tugler. Um, we played uh, Australian national team with Josh Giddy and Joe Ingles and Patty Mills and uh, that bunch. And I thought our two best players were JoJo Tugler and um, uh, LJ Cryer. And that, that told me something that about this group that we could be pretty good after we left there. We won four games, but the only one, I mean, we lost, we won three and lost one, but the one we lost, I got a lot out of that one. That, that was really good for us. And then uh, uh, Jamal uh, leadership uh, is respected. You know, just cause you're the team's best player doesn't mean you get to be the captain. Um, uh, I've had a lot of teams where my best player was not the captain cause I don't let the players vote. A lot of times they, they don't vote right. You know, I know who the captain should be, and that's why we always have the right captain. But uh, Jamal's leadership is important on this team. J1 Roberts' maturity uh, and his day-to-day -day approach is important. And they embrace work. You know, you'll, you'll never hear them complain about work. There's a lot of people that are never successful in life because they don't like to work. You know, they're complaining about something dealing with work. Uh, our guys aren't like that. Coach, on the back row. Uh, J1 sat most of that second half. It looked like he might be banged it again. Was that more precautionary just with a big lead? Yeah. No, I was um, – if we'd have had an – I probably – I mean, as you saw, um, Ryan Elvin. Um, you know, Ryan Elvin starts going against other wall calls. That's not a fair fight. You know, Ryan, Ryan can play. I see him do that a lot, but – there's not very many walk-ons you would trust to put in with five, six minutes to go in the game. I trust him. And so being able to take our starters out, um, you know, we've just been banged up with so many injuries, um, especially with Arsenal and Tugler uh, out. But, uh, you know, sometimes that brings your team closer together. Uh, our kids are, no, we don't ever worry about it or complain about it. We just go play. Okay. Just in front of us. Yeah, Jerome Solomon with Houston Chronicle. What are your first thoughts on uh, Texas A&M uh, coming out Sunday? Well, if I had to be in the locker room before the game, I would, I would much rather be in theirs uh, before the game because, you know, they have the advantage of um, revenge. You know, it's not going to be hard to motivate their kids because they're, they're going to want to come in here and, and um, um, you know, get some payback. But um, Texas A&M is a much, much better team uh, today than when we played them. 
Uh, the Radford kid, I think, is terrific. Uh, he didn't play against us. Um, a Basaki kid, uh, I think he played, but not much. And, the, and, and Buzz, like all really good coaches, has figured out how to win the game. He just spaces the floor and let those three guys shoot all the balls. And when they shoot and miss, he, he plays sick them with the other ones. You know, they're a great offensive rebounding team, and they got three guys that can control it. There's, there's a reason why they um, have won five in a row. The only one I think game, they, I think they lost to Florida in the championship. Was that the championship game? I can't remember. Semis. So they lost to Florida in the semis. But I think they're, if you look at the SEC right now, probably the best team in the SEC right now is Texas A&M. So um, they're, a team, they're a team that can get to the Final Four. They're that good. Uh, the, I think we're a lot better than we were in um, December um, uh, with our guards, but not up front. You know, the guy that, that we really need in this game is, is a guy like Tugler because he's such a good rebounder. And I say that because A&M is elite, elite offensive rebounding team. We're good, but we're not elite. They're elite. They're, they're a much better offensive rebounding team than we are. Houston goes in off a sixth straight first-round win. Coach, congrats on that. We'll see you Sunday. Okay, thank you, guys.